I've been ordering some things off eBay. I've noticed that they're um, some of them are being slower, slower to arrive. Um, but I've had this for a little while. Well, maybe about a week or so, maybe two weeks. And um, I thought this would be fun to try out in my Super Socket Seven system. It's a Cirix M2 300 processor. It actually runs about 233 megahertz. So let's put this in and see if it works. This is the system that I've got that it's going to go into. I haven't actually done a video about this on YouTube. I sort of started doing one, but I didn't actually get there in the end. Um, but this has got an AMD K62500 in it. And this was a PC I built in around 1999 about 20 years ago so I'll give you a quick tour of this I actually built it for someone and then had it um, got it back many years later when they finished using it so it's kind of like history trip down the lane and um, as you can see it's sort of rusted in parts this needs to reattach to the back the board's got built-in sound um, but I'm actually using a sound card because um, I was having problems with the drivers I've got a Voodoo 3 3000 in there and this is an AGP Pro PC100, it's a PC chips motherboard. It's got SD RAM back there that you can't really see. So this gives us a better view here. This is the Voodoo 3 3000 graphics card, sound card, which is a creative. And if we have a look behind here, I have used thermal paste, as you can see. This is a K62500 with a 2.2 volt core or a, yeah, I think so. And behind here, if we zoom in, we have got the jumper set things which we will need to alter for both the voltage. This processor is a 2.9 volts and we've got a different bus speed of 66 megahertz and 3.5 times multiplier and some jumpers here yep ABC which relates to that bit and then where are the other jumpers it could be these uh, JP6 yes it's, it's down here can you see it no nope. we've got this is one of the jumpers. This is the other set. We are currently on 2.2 volts, uh, so we need to change that to 2.9. This is the frustrating thing about old computers: is having to change jumpers for things like voltage, multiplier, things like that. Okay, so not only do we have jumpers for the multiplier and the voltage we also have over here a series of jumpers for the speed of the memory so the front side bus speed is controlled by these jumpers here and you'll see back there I can't actually see what the settings are and I can't really reach these because all this stuff's in the way. What I might try and do is leave that as it is. That should be 100 megahertz, and set the multiplier to something that might work with this processor. Okay, I've got 2.9 volts. I've gone for two times multiplier. That should be 200 megahertz with a front side bus of 100. And we can now put in this 
processor. Checking the pins are not bent. Note that this is seems much thicker than the K62. Then we can put the heatsink back on and see if this works. the performance is going to be nowhere near the same level as the K62500 because we're effectively running a 20 megahertz processor in comparison to a 500 megahertz processor. Okay, I think we are at the uh, moment of truth where we switch this computer on and let's press the power button. And we have something on the screen. There we go. Cirrix M2 233. So it's obviously running at the wrong speed, but it is actually working. So that's the main thing. I don't know whether this will actually tell me what it's doing. 333,000. Cirrix M2233. 262 mega RAM. We used to build these um, Cirrix based systems as. Um, a cheap option for people wanting a whole computer system. This is the 3DFX version of Quake. Um, just running through a quick time demo to see what sort of frame rate. Um, and we got it at 43 frames per second. I think uh, with the system, with the K62, which is a 500 megahertz processor, I think it's getting around 100 frames per second. So I'm just going to see if I can run um, CPUZ. Yep, yeah, we're running a Cirrix M2 at 200 megahertz. So, as it's a 233 processor, it'd be good to see if we can get it running at 250 megahertz. Um, we'll also just run a quick Quake demo to show you what it's like without the 3DFX graphics. As you can probably tell. This processor is struggling. Quite surprising um, this system still runs after 20 years. It's you know PC chips are known as a budget brand when it comes to motherboards and um, there doesn't appear to be any issue with any of the capacitors on the board. Um, otherwise, are leaking. It's got a button battery, um, so that's fine. What would you guess the frame rate is? About 15? 15 frames per second? Let's have a look. 12. 12.2 frames per second. 
we've gone for a 2.5 times 100 to give us 250 megahertz. Hopefully I've made the right changes to the jumpers. And we are getting Sirix M2366. So that's a not the real speed, that's what they think the processor is equivalent to. Um, but of course that's not always how it works out. It very much depends what you are running, what system, games, etc. And games are not a friend of Cyrix processors. But we will confirm the settings with CPZ. There we go, 250 megahertz. So that's quicker than it's meant to run at, which was 233. So it's not much quicker. Um, so it should hopefully cope with this. So let's just give it a quick go of Quake. Ooh, that's not what you want to see. Although, I think there was a bug in Windows 98 when you create shortcuts on the desktop and it doesn't it doesn't give you the um, it doesn't do the running thing yeah so it needs to start in see it doesn't do that for some reason when you create a shortcut send a shortcut to the desktop so you have to fix that anyway let's see what sort of performance we get from a 250 megahertz Cyrix processor it's still slow basically should be seeing a what 25% increase in performance perhaps if my maths are correct We got 14.5 frames per second. So let's um, run the 3D Mark version, not 3D Mark, 3D FX version, and see how this one performs. You can definitely see a big improvement in performance speed there by adding the 3DFX graphics card. So, um, gaming wasn't totally impossible with a Cyrix processor. We would greatly benefit from a 3DFX graphics card. Here we're getting 53.3 frames per second. Let's have a quick look, see if we're actually able to run Quake 3. So we've got a 640 by 480 normal 640 full screen Let's see if I can remember how to do this You can tell it's going pretty slow.
I mean, the sound... No, the sound is not good. What do you think about? 15? 20? Frames per second maybe? If we're lucky? Seventeen point seven frames. I've put the graphics setting on fast and six forty by four eighty, and I have hopefully, I think, switched off the sound. So we will see if this makes any real difference or not. Okay, so I have switched off the sound. <coughs> the frame rate looks pretty similar, but we're not getting the um, juttery sound going through. Um, I've added a fan to the system because the 3D FX graphics card can get very hot and does benefit from some additional ventilation. Ooh, that was a crash. That was a, yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. I am going to crash instead. So perhaps this chip doesn't like running at 250 megahertz. I mean, it was only designed to run at 233. So I may put it back down to 200. Hmm. wonder if we will get any information regarding temperatures from this. No, nope, we will not. SD RAM at cast 3. <laughs> wow, seven. It's incredible. So we go what AMD A ten. Yeah. Quite a big uh a big difference in performance there. 